In today's video, I'll be fixing up an old vintage wooden dresser that I found at a thrift store and flipping it on Facebook Marketplace. So stick around. Hey everyone, Side Hustle Steve here, and this is the only channel on YouTube that gives you money every week for finding a random sloth during the video. So there's that. Before I get into today's video, I need to address the new piece of wall art that I have. As you can see, it says presented to whatever your channel name is this week for passing a thousand subscribers. It's a little inside joke I have with YouTube because I've changed my name so many times. They even signed it at the bottom. This is real YouTube. So that's pretty cool. Apparently 100,000 subscribers is silver, a million subscribers is gold, 10 million subscribers is diamond, 100 million subscribers is red diamond, and 1,000 subscribers is uh, Crayola. So there's that. Seriously though, thank you to all of you who subscribed to my channel. I'm shocked at how quickly this is growing and I love being a part of this community. Keep letting me know in the comment section what I can improve on. I respond to everything and love knowing how I can better serve all of you. Without your support, I'm just a guy in a room talking to his phone by himself. So thank you. Okay, back to the video. If you're new to the channel, last year I paid off $42,000 worth of debt with the help of a few side hustles. This year, my mission is to turn my $600 stimulus check into $20,000 by the end of the year, only doing side hustles. As of last week, I had a total channel profit of $7,006. Stick around to the end of the video to see where I'm at now. All right, now for last week's $50 winner. After randomly generating a number and sifting through the comments, congratulations. Congratulations, Roma G, you are the winner. I hope the $50 helps you on your side hustle journey. For this week's $50 giveaway, subscribe to the show, timestamp the slot, and then comment which YouTuber gives you inspiration in the furniture flipping space. There are so many great flippers out there. Furniture flipping newbie, the furniture flipping teacher, who just paid off her student loan debt with the help of flipping furniture, which is awesome. Congratulations, Jamie and Sarah. Christina Muscari, and that shabby guy, just to name a few. I want this community to keep growing, so please check out the other YouTubers if you haven't already. All right, sorry for the long intro. Today, I'll be fixing up an old vintage wooden dresser that I found at my favorite thrift store. I had a lot of fun fixing it up and I'm super pumped with how it turned out. If you wanna follow along at home, I have links to all the products I use in the description box below. I get a small kickback whenever you use. So picking it up for 45, it looks in really good shape. No like dings or nicks or anything. It's just, it's just dirty and I'm gonna be sanding it down and repainting it anyway. It looks really good. All right, here it is looking beautiful. Um, I have everything that I need to start this flip, so I'm gonna get into that right now. I have it propped up on two paint canisters. That's just to help me get to the bottom and not actually uh, scuff up the floor or to get underneath it a little bit so I can make sure that it has a good finish. All right, so I have the sander. And this is what I'm gonna use to go over some of these uh, deeper abrasions or deeper cuts. Technically, you don't need a sand if you're using a chalk paint, but some of these uneven areas, I think there's another one right there. I just don't wanna go over it with chalk paint and have it be uneven. So I'm just gonna do a light sanding with 220 grit sandpaper with my sander. And then I'm gonna clean everything with the TSP. That is just gonna allow me to get all the dust and grime and dirt off of it so it can have a nice even finish when I put on the paint. A couple of people mentioned that I need to just clean it off, clean off the TSP residue with soapy water. That would prevent any of the grime from the TSP staying on the actual furniture piece. So remember, if you're using TSP or a degreaser, to clean it off with soapy water after. Then I just have a paintbrush that's gonna help me get into all these crevices that I can't get into with the roller. I have a roller. And then I'm going to be using a dark gray chalk paint. Um, so I'm pretty pumped about that because I think it's gonna look really really good. I just ordered all the hardware off Amazon. I'll show that whole process right now. And that should arrive in a day or so. So I'm pumped for that to get here. Last time I just spray painted this, which you could do. I just don't like this hardware as much. So instead of spray painting over it, I'm going to get new hardware off Amazon. And then at the end, I'm going to go over 
with the polyurethane fast drying protective coat. I did that last time, it saved me so much time because that polyurethane coat still puts a nice coat on it that's gonna prevent future staining and future watermarks from showing up and it was so much easier to put on than the wax. That's what I'm gonna use and I'm gonna put you down so I can take the hardware off and then I will start the sanding process. All right, let's get it. Okay, so I just finished taking off all the hardware. It's all down there. A few of you mentioned in the comments that when I take it, the drawers out, that I should number them. That is a great solution. There aren't too many drawers this time, so I'm just gonna keep them in a row and just paint them like that. And then I know that one goes at the top, that one goes at the bottom, and they're in like an actual order right there. And then also something that I didn't bring up earlier, I do have to put in some wood filler in these holes because I don't plan to use the same hardware the hardware is going to be in different holes so I need to put some wood filler in those holes wait for it to dry and then sand that down so eventually I can put in the new hardware and so I'm gonna do that and then I'm going to migrate over to that and do the sanding again you don't typically have to do sanding with the chalk paint but I am this time just because there's a few scratches that I want to even out usually the chalk paint will probably take care of that so I don't even really need to do it even in this situation but I'm just gonna do it just to be careful and just to make sure that I have a good even finish at the end so I'm gonna put you down and start on the wood filler and and the sanding Just got done with the wood filler and the sanding. So I'm all done there. And then coming over here, I just need to now get all this dust and grime off. And so I can start painting. It looks good. Again, probably not necessary, but those pieces are way smoother now. If nothing else, it's gonna help the chalk paint adhere to the surface a little bit better. Hopefully just have a smoother finish. So I'm gonna use the TSP to get some of the grime off. And then I will use soap and water after that to get the TSP off. Any residue from that TSP and remove that uh, and then we can start painting. All right, let's go. All right, so I let the wood filler dry a little bit and I also let the TSP dry. So I am good to start painting. Before I do that, I'm just going to sand these down to get them nice and smooth. I'm gonna go over that with TSP to get all the grime out of the drawers. While that's drying, I will start to paint the actual dresser. Quick tip before I start, saw a couple of the other YouTubers doing this and it's super smart. I'm gonna wrap my painting tray in tin foil and that'll allow me to have a quicker cleanup at the end. It also allows me to reuse that tray each and every time and I'll be brand new basically because I'll just take the tin foil out. And then on top of that, I'm going to do, this is just water. I'm just gonna spray it down about four times with water. I'm gonna try to cut down on the, the texture that I had in the last dresser with chalk paint. And so hopefully just a little bit of water will help reduce that texture. Yeah, give me a nice smooth, easy finish. All right, let's go.
So that is it for the first coat of painting. It actually looks pretty good. It's way more blue than I thought it was going to be. It's slowly starting to grow on me, so I'm starting to like it. But one issue here that I found is laminate is starting to come up here. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, laminate is starting to come up there. Um, so I'm going to, once the paint dries, I'm gonna have to go back over this and sand it down or put some adhesive over it to make sure that doesn't happen. A little bit of a setback could be much worse. I'm hoping that it's a quick fix, but we'll see shortly. I'm gonna give the paint roughly two hours to dry. Then I'll be back out here to sand that down and then put the second coat on. Two hours later. So I'm back out here. It looks really good. I'm warming up to this color. It's a lot darker. There's more of a blue tone to it. I don't know if that's coming across in the camera very well, but definitely more of a blue tone. Yeah, but I'm actually, I'm actually liking it. I thought I was gonna put like at least another two to three coats, but now it looks like I should be okay with just one more coat. It's just what it's looking like right now. The only bummer is this part needs some attention right here. I'm not sure if you can see that. I'm gonna attempt to sand this down right now. All right, I forgot to mention this before, but I'm gonna put um, Shugu on that spot. Now that I've sanded it down, it actually is, is very smooth. I don't want it to pop up again, and so I'm just gonna put some Shugu over it just to make sure that it completely adheres to the surface. Once that dries, I'll sand that down. So while the shoe goo is drying, I am going to wipe these down with a microfiber cloth and then I will start the painting process again. Again, getting all the debris off of it because if you let them sit for about two hours for the paint to dry and then you come back and there's dust all over it and then you paint over that, it doesn't look good. I might do one, one quick sanding with the 220 grit sandpaper pad. Probably doesn't hurt just to smooth it out a little bit and then that'll also help the paint on the second coat adhere just a little bit better. All right, let's do that. All right, so that is the second coat of paint. It looks good. I think I could be done. So we'll just see how everything dries. But right now it looks like it's totally covered, which is great. I have another day until the hardware gets in. So I have time to let it settle and then really make up my mind whether I want to put another coat of paint on it or not. I'm gonna learn from my mistake last week and make sure that I put on the polyurethane before I put on the hardware. I will make that decision here in the next two hours or so. When the paint dries, I'll come back out and I'll look at everything and see if, see if it looks totally covered and see if I can put on the polyurethane. Cool. All right, so I am looking at the dresser and it looks fantastic. So I actually really like this color. I like the way it turned out. It looks good. When I put the hardware on, it's going to look amazing. I ended up getting different hardware because of how dark that it turned out. I didn't want to go with black hardware, so I ended up getting these acrylic gold um, hardware pieces that I think is going to look really good on this piece. So I'm going to spray it down now, let it dry. I think it's, I think I put three coats on. In between each coat, I let it dry for roughly an hour, and then I'll put on the hardware. All right.
it is all done and I actually think it looks pretty good look at that that looks wonderful so the drawers are all in it's all completely covered the polyurethane is on I think it looks good I'm going to take some photos of it right now I'm gonna try to stage it get it listed and see if we can get this thing sold all right so I actually think that came out pretty good the darker finish really grew on me and I really like that gold acrylic hardware I'm sure the black handles would have been just fine but I really like the contrast between the darker finish on the dresser and the lighter acrylic handles. I'm starting to feel a little bit more comfortable repainting the furniture pieces and every time I have to order tools online and use them in a project I actually feel much better and much more confident going into my next piece. Before I get into what I made this week I want to go over what I learned during this project. Tip number one, when it comes to hardware, always order more than what you think you need. I ended up breaking one of the handles before I could put it on the dresser, which led to another two to three days of lag time because I had to order that item off of Amazon. And if I just would have ordered a few more pieces, because I'm probably gonna use them on future builds anyway, if I just would have ordered a few more pieces, I would have been just fine and I would have been able to complete the project about three days ago. Always order extra when you're ordering online. You'll probably just use them in future flips and it prevents you from wasting a a lot of time waiting for items to come in. Tip number two, wash your piece down with soapy water after you're finished with the TSP. I learned this from a few of you in the comment section after looking through some of my older pieces where I didn't remove the TSP after I was finished washing down the piece. There was some areas where it looked a little blotchy and that could have been due to the residue left from the TSP. So after you're done using the TSP, wiping down your furniture piece, make sure you just get some soapy water and wipe all the TSP residue off your piece. Tip number three, think twice before drilling new holes for your hardware. I was unaware about how long and tedious that process would be. I ended up getting a metal ruler and a nice leveler, which did help a lot. If you're gonna put new hardware on your piece, which does make it look really nice, you're gonna have to buy a few different things to speed along the process and do it correctly. If you're trying to do that on a current piece, I linked all the things that I used in, in the description box below. Like always, I learned a ton from all of you in the comment section in the last video. So please keep it coming. All right, so let's talk about the money side. I purchased the dresser on sale for $45. I spent another $70 on paint, hardware, and tools. That cost will go down a lot as I acquire all the tools needed to just complete the project outright. But as of right now, I'm just applying that extra cost to each individual project, which means after everything, I've spent $115. In total, this project took me about five hours. And as of right now, I'm valuing my time at $20 per hour, which means I'm gonna list the dresser at $215. Depending on where you live, $20 an hour might be low for this project, but here's what I'm thinking. I've seen other YouTubers price their items much higher, but they're also much better at this than I am, and they're also doing it much quicker than I am. As I start to feel comfortable and my craft improves, I'll start to raise my hourly wage, but for right now, I feel pretty good with $20 an hour. I just listed it, so it hasn't sold yet, but I'll update you in the next video what it sells for. Work got a little crazy this week, and I really dropped the ball on side hustles. I ended up just selling three couches for a total profit of $305 and had just one Facebook dropshipping order for a total profit of $10.58. My weekly profit was $315. This brings my total channel profit to $7,321. If I'm going to hit my 20k goal, I really need to step it up. I have 33 weeks left in the year and I need to make $12,679 more dollars, which means I need to average $384 every single week. Like I said in previous videos, I'm gonna go all in on furniture flipping for the next couple weeks until I feel comfortable buying and reselling furniture pieces. If you wanna watch a video in my couch flipping series, I'm gonna link one of the videos here. Take a look at that one. If you wanna follow my furniture flipping journey, start on this video right here. I'm already working on my next furniture piece, so stay tuned for that in the next week's video.